Okay, hi everyone. I will talk uh, today about uh, explicit sync, or rather, not really explicit sync, but disabling implicit sync. Uh, so, sync here, like synchronization, is when we start uh, are trying to synchronize GPU work with other GPU work. Like, hey, you're submitting something for rendering, and then you want to make sure that, hey, the rendering actually finished before you start to display the thing. And you can do that explicitly. Hey, we have a fence or a semaphore or whatever your API has for specifying that dependency. Or you can do implicit, which is kind of like kind of provides a, a sort of GPU side locking on the, the buffers that you touch. And I'll do a short intro on like roughly how this works in the kernel. So like the kernel has a DMA fence object that uh, signals the completion of some work and it can be waited upon, it can be signaled, uh, it has a ton of helper things like callbacks, uh, you just can't reset it like it's a one shot thing and that's how a lot of these dependencies are tracked in the kernel actually both for implicit and explicit synchronization. And then in the user space, there's some API around this, uh, like we have a bunch of containers that are user space accessible, like there's sync objects, which is a container of zero or one DMA fence, which can be replaced or reset. So like, hey, when you submit some work, like in a submission, you can say, hey, I have an out sync object, and then the a driver may just put a DMA fence in there that can be waited uh, uh, on later and there's a sync after your sync file that basically is a file is a file that points to a DMA fence uh, and it always has a, a DMA fence that's active uh, uh, so uh, you can't just have it empty and never signal uh, and then how does implicit sync work well every buffer has a dma every dma buff has a dma reservation and it contains up to one exclusive fence and many shared fences and then like on submit uh, the user space driver passes a list of referenced buffers and then the kernel driver can go get the dma fences from all those uh, res er, DMA reservations and then wait on them before executing the work and then like the GPU work generates a new DMA fence and we can put that in all the DMA reservations and like if you do the CPU part of this somewhat atomically like it kind of gets you a locking mechanism on the GPU um, and you can use the exclusive fences, you can use the shared fences, like on the AMD side, like we kind of conceptually always do the exclusive uh, fence, uh, but like there's drivers where you can say, hey, I'm writing this buffer, I'm reading this buffer, where you tip, uh, would do like exclusive or shared fences to basically do a read-write lock. Um, but of course, hey, I, I, I'm the guy that's writing for uh, a guy that's writing Vulkan drivers. So, and Vulkan is all about explicit sync and no implicit sync. So, this is the exact kind of stuff that I don't want to do with my submissions. So, how do we get rid of it? And so, when AMD GPU is created, they had an interesting first step. So uh, the AMD hardware has different queues that can run in parallel, like we have compute queues, we have a graphics queue, we have DMA queues. Um, so that instead of actually taking uh, this, ex uh, setting the exclusive fence and, and stuff, they um, made everything like do a shared fence and then let the driver determine things using a fence owner. So they extended the DMA fence like with the DRM SCAD fence and that has an owner and they basically said, hey, your address space or VM space of like, like the DRMFD is the owner of the, of the fence and we're only going to synchronize with fences that have a different owner. So that means that like within a single process, you've now basically killed implicit sync. Mostly. We'll talk about all the exceptions later. Um, of course, like half year into Red 3 development roughly, 
Valve came and said, hey, we want to do a VR composter with Vulkan and everything. And that has explicit synchronization. And now you're actually sharing buffers between processes. And they didn't want any implicit synchronization, which was especially visible at some point with high priority compute, like if there were any missed frames or anything like that. Um, so we needed something more than this. So we added a way on buffer creation on the AMD side to mark a buffer as explicit sync. Uh, and those like to disable it, we basically say, hey, we, we don't wait on any fences at all. Um, if we can determine the owner and it only exception is memory fences. So if the kernel is moving memory around, then it got a very uh, for like spilling to VRAM uh, or from VRAM to GTT or something like that. Like it's got a very special owner that it always hard codes as always do. But otherwise, like we skip always waiting, but we still add the fences. And they, this is very annoying because you can't like it really relies on all the submissions on this buffer participating because otherwise you're still implicitly syncing somewhere. And that's going to be a problem later because you can't just create this buffer and send it to a DL driver because your DL driver totally doesn't expect to have no implicit sync at all. So that's so that's like, hey, Vulkan to Vulkan, this works, but Vulkan to DL, this doesn't work. So you can't actually use this for the WSI or anything. Uh, Besides the fact that a lot of WSIs actually don't have any explicit sync to replace the implicit sync. Um, and some other drivers have like, hey, if we want to do a submission without implicit sync, we don't touch the DMA reservation at all. And this has some limitations because now you don't know all your submissions anymore that touch that buffer so like you have to do much more aggressive idling of the whole gpu if you want to actually move a buffer uh, to some other place um so it, it's doable but it has its own limitations and so there are some remainder like as i said wsi buffers are still excluded the other thing we had in amd is of uh, Mapping and unmapping buffers to the GPU address space was still very, very implicit sync. And we, in the meantime, we would also grown a stuff where a DMA rest phase may not necessarily be totally associated to a buffer. We have this thing where with uh, the uh, rise of bindless in Vulkan, sometimes you have like, I have a thousand buffers that I'm just going to specify on every submission and going through that entire list is very slow. So let's just make the kernel track that list and do very fast stuff with it, which includes only having a single DMA reservation for this entire list, uh, which meant that uh, we can, can't really use uh, the explicit sync flag for anything related to this because we're not actually creating a buffer associated with it, this DMA reservation. Um, but there's been work this year to actually make it possible to clean this up. Uh, so Christian Koenig uh, landed something earlier this year. This basically says, hey, instead of doing exclusive and shared uh, fences in your reservation, we're going to have a couple more options. So like your write and read are your typical like exclusive shared thing that we had before, like with implicit. Uh, sync your kernel thing is like hey if you have your memory move then that needs to sync to literally everything because nothing else can change or read things while we move memory and then we have bookkeep which is like hey we're using this but we don't want to participate in implicit synchronization so so we have a couple more levels and that allows us to now specify a lot more information and we can actually use this to disable implicit synchronization everywhere in our Vulkan driver. Uh, we can just add a flag to say submission or some context or queue or whatever have you that you use for submission to say, hey, we should only wait on kernel fences and only set bookkeep fences. And uh, yeah, we can stop marking buffers as explicit sync, except that we just break WSI because there's a lot of WSI that 
doesn't have any way to send an explicit uh, fence or sync file over to the display server or composter or something like that. And well, Jason added some new IOCTOS for this, where basically we can take a sync object or, or a sync file and say, hey, we take the fence from the sync file and put it in the DMA reservation and the other way around. And this way we can say, hey, totally independent of our actual submissions, we can now use the DMA reservation basically as a container for fences from user space as well. So kind of like uh, the implicit synchronization mechanism now is a real side channel for communicating to your WSI for when is this ready for displaying and nothing else. Um, so that's roughly... Uh, a bunch of this stuff landed, a bunch of this is still in review on my site uh, because um, memory management is hard and I also wanted to kill the um, implicit sync on the memory with it and we can totally do that because now we can say hey memory mapping o only has to wait on like your implicit sync things and bookkeep fences don't matter except that for memory management you actually have to care a bit that uh, your work is actually done before you destroy a buffer a and stuff like that. So there, there are some corner cases that we have to worry about with stuff that we're looking at. Um, but yeah, once this lands, I think we're finally completely implicit sync free in Red V, uh, which is, I think, finally free of all, all those, like we're partially there, partially not there, but we've hacked around enough that it's not a problem. And I'd like to thank a couple of people, uh, Christian Koenig for doing a lot of the uh, DMA, bu uh, DMA reservation, DMA buff work on this, uh, Jason for his new IOCTOS and Daniel for pushing us all along to get this together. Uh, and that was my talk. Are there any questions? And not, oh, Alisa? Yes, so the question was like, since we're bringing up the new drivers, like, um, for for example, as I like, can we do, use this for ex explicit sync in our Vulkan drivers from day one? And I think it's totally ready for that. The like th this thing works across all drives; it's pretty horizontal. So uh, as long as you don't build in any traps in your driver to still hit implicit sync, I think this is pretty doable. Uh, Jason says he will nag the, uh, a driver if it doesn't. Okay, are there any other questions? Yes. Uh, okay, so the question was, what's the main motivation for this work? So, um, Implicit sync leads to surprises at some point when, like, it's kind of that we still have to enable this in over synchronization issues. And sometimes over synchronization doesn't really matter because, hey, it's exactly the same thing you're doing explicit anyway, but sometimes it's actually more synchronization and you're actually blocking stuff. So, like, one thing that can actually happen is like when we do bindless and you have all your buffers in your list and now you're writing Vulcan composters that keep your buffers alive, that then suddenly you care. But uh, the more direct thing was uh, actually the unmapping and mapping thing where we had problems with uh, games with sparse mapping and unmapping that streamed data in and out where we had graphics work bubbles because uh, Actually, page table work can take quite a, quite a lot of time of the frame. And with like basically implicit sync taking a look, you couldn't do any actual useful work for the frame in that time. So Forza Horizon 5 is a game we extensively debugged that on that we saw clear like, hey, if 
20, 30% of your frame is just page table mapping that doesn't lead to a great experience. Uh, so, uh, yeah, obviously we want the page table stuff to be faster, but the easy way is like, let's just run it in parallel because we can. A lot of games actually like, they don't do any further synchronization, like, hey, it's some mapping that's asynchronous and we just wait on it on the CPU. So there's, it is very well paralyzable. So actually, no, uh, when we benchmark it, like the stutter is better, but the efforts is almost not moved. So it's, it's like the periods that it starts not, it's very bad, but like it's not moving the efforts much. Uh, most of it, like, like, um, main benchmarking platform was the Steam Deck and as usual streaming is extra CPU work which means uh, less uh, power for the GPU which means like obviously your performance is still going to be lower on like a power constraint platform if your the game is doing more CPU work to actually bring that data in. Okay, no other questions then thank you all.